This is Winnell News. Good afternoon and welcome to Winnell Radio. Coming up today, criticism for the Prime Minister after changes to the benefit system. Campaigners in the Isle of Wight call for improvements to the ferry service. And it's been a hectic period for Petersfield Town ahead of their cup semi-final. This is Winnell News. Hello, I'm your host Guy Nicklinson. Today's top story... Rishi Sunak has been accused of an assault on disabled people following Friday's announcement that mental health will no longer be considered an acceptable reason for long-term sickness. The changes will see PIP payments, a welfare benefit for those with a health condition or disability, reduced, as well as an end to what the Prime Minister referred to as sick note culture. If you're feeling anxious or depressed, then of course you should get the support and treatment you need to manage your condition. But that doesn't mean we should assume you can't engage in work. On Friday, Rishi Sunak announced his plans to reform the benefit system, with mental health sufferers now being urged to return to work instead of taking long-term sickness. Sunak announced that PIP payments would also be decreased as a result of this proposal to further encourage mental health sufferers to return to work whilst receiving NHS support. However, NHS staff are already reporting concerns for this new scheme, with pressures on their mental health teams already being overwhelmed with an estimated 11.8 million Britons now being on the 18-week waiting list. One mental health nurse spoke to Winchester News Online about the reformation. He doesn't even mention that sometimes people's physical and mental health may fluctuate, and my personal view is that he's painting it out to be black and white, when actually it's a lot more nuanced and complicated than that. Here's what the people of Winchester have to say. There is not the resources there to support people with mental health issues at present, and this will only get worse with these proposals. As someone who works for the NHS, I think it's ridiculous the fact that now it's not classed that mental health is a good enough or valid enough reason to take time off work. They always say that you're supposed to take care of yourself, otherwise you can't take care of others. It completely diminishes the principle. However, some people have showed support for the Prime Minister's proposal. I think the decision could be a good idea if given the time. Since the announcement, the Prime Minister has received criticism for what has been called an assault on disabled people. Jodie Kelly, Winchester News Online. Now we go across to our news centre where Eliak McVie has the latest. Thanks. Guy, French media have reported that at least five migrants have died during attempts to cross the English Channel. Coast Guard officials in France have, concert, have confirmed an incident at Wimereau near Calais. The town is used regularly by people traffickers and those trying to reach Great Britain. It comes just hours after Rishi Sunak's Rwanda bill, which he says will deter people making the crossing, was finally passed by Parliament. The Prime Minister has assured Ukraine's president of steadfast support after announcing a record package of military funding. Rishi Sunak has promised £500 million as well as 400 vehicles, 60 boats and over 1,600 missiles to support its war on Russia. It takes the overall spending on aid to Ukraine to £3 billion this financial year. Military analyst Simon Diggins says it does raise concerns about the UK's own defence spending. This government is still arguing about whether or not it can... This government is still arguing about whether or not it can increase its defence budget to 2.5% of GDP. You know, the opposition, you know, which in this case is, is Russia, currently spending 7.5%. So it's absolutely vital what we're doing, supporting Ukraine, but we then look very, very hard at our own defence. The number of vehicle breakdowns caused by potholes is up by 9%. Figures show the RAC was called out over 27,000 times because of poor road surfaces in the 12 months to the end of March. Common issues include damaged shock absorbers, broken suspensions and punctures. The cost of improving the state of pothole-affected roads in England and Wales has been estimated at £16.3 billion. Simon Williams from the RAC says it's a massive problem. Drivers should be concerned that the roads are in an increasingly poor state. If we were to have a harsh winter this year, then I think things could be even worse. I know we're trying to fix the roads, but councils don't have enough money. In local news, Winchester City have played their last ever home game on natural grass. Saturday's 1-0 win over Beaconsfield Town was the final match at the Charters Community Stadium before a new artificial surface is installed over the summer. 
The new pitch will serve not just the Winchester First Team, but also the women's team, youth teams and the wider community. Board member Stuart Munro says the club hopes to have the work done by the start of next season, but a provisional ground share with Basingstoke Town has been agreed should there be any delays. And finally, today marks St George's Day, and the people of Romsey have been celebrating the occasion with their annual parade. Around 800 people gathered outside the abbey before local scouts and guides marched through the town centre. The procession saluted local dignitaries in the hundred, accompanied by music from the Romsey Old Cadets Band. Attendees included Romsey MP Caroline Noakes, Test Valley Mayor Pete Philip Lashbrook and Romsey Mayor John Ray. That's all your latest this hour. Back to you. This is Win All News. The Isle of Wight ferries may look fine from the outside, but for their residents, the problems are building. From increased cost and cancellations to an early last boat limiting how late islanders can stay out, the situation is slowly turning into a nightmare for residents. Jacob Rayner tells us more. Getting to and from the Isle of Wight has never been more difficult. The ferries are the only way to get there and the two companies hold a duopoly over the residents, consistently upping prices and even limiting the ferry schedule since Covid. I spoke to a couple of island locals about what changes they think the ferries should make. Um, if they had a student option for tickets. For a start, the prices, the prices are astronomical. Bad upkeep and constant delays has led to the creation of White Link User Group, or WUG for short, who are campaigning for better service. I spoke to the founder, Bronwyn Brown, about the issues. Even Cinderella gets to stay out till midnight, and we have to be back by eight. We're residents. This is, as I say, our road. So, you know, it, we should have a public service obligation. We sh there should be a capped amount that they can charge. It shouldn't be something that is like we, we're going on a cruise liner. We're not. We're going on a bloody bus. Both Red Funnel and White Link have said they are listening to passenger feedback and have been increasing ferry numbers. They've also both had over 95% punctuality over the past year. But MP Bob Seeley thinks it's about time for radical change. Uh, something else that we could be doing is to give absolute support wherever we can to other people who are seeking to enter the market. So there's a potential third ferry operator. Uh, I think we should be absolutely publicly supporting that. I think then what you would do is very quickly, Red Funnel White Link would successfully go bust and you would put them all in a community interest company and maybe, you know, restructuring the entire solar ferry market. But there might just be something that goes even further and rids the idea of needing ferries altogether. Carl Feeney has been campaigning that building a tunnel from Gosport to the island is the answer. It could generate $250 million a year for the island, but a study that would make it happen has been held back for nine years. The two ferry companies, are, yeah, they're desperately trying to stop this from happening. Even if a study occurs it will decimate their share price because the obvious 100 percent conclusion that the study would come to is that the tunnel is a much more efficient cheap and reliable way of going about things the upcoming elections could be the catalyst needed to regulate the ferries or finally complete a viability study jacob rayner when on news online the Rwanda bill that will see asylum seekers sent to the African country was passed late last night after a lot of discussion and disagreement in Parliament. But another bill that has been much talked about recently is the possible smoking ban for future generations. Morgan Michener Banks has all the latest on this topic. The sound that may become less and less common in the coming years as Rishi Sunak aims to bring in a ban on cigarettes for the future generations. The bill itself will not ban the act of smoking, but rather prohibit the purchase of cigarettes in the UK and would apply to everyone born in or after 2009, as the legal age for buying cigarettes would raise by one year every year. To ensure this crackdown on tobacco purchase is effective and successful, the government have said they will spend £30 million on enforcement of the law and on tackling the availability of cigarettes on the black market. Simon Clark from the pro-tobacco lobby group Forest has expressed his disappointment in the new law. 
a 30-year-old can buy tobacco, but a 29-year-old won't be allowed to. That'll happen within 10 or 15 years. People will realize it's farcical. But at that stage, the anti-smoking lobby will simply say, well, let's ban the sale of cigarettes to everybody. That's where we go. We're going towards prohibition. Prohibition never works. Meanwhile, the Shadow Health Secretary, Wes Streeting, argued his reasonings as to why the ban should come into place in Parliament. This is a lethal addiction, a scourge on society, an enormous burden on our NHS, a drag on our economy, and it is time to consign it to the dustbins of history. A free vote on the bill took place last Tuesday, and here's how the results turned out. The eyes to the right, 383, the nose to the left, 67, so the eyes have it, the eyes have it. As you heard there, the majority of Parliament voted in favour of the bill, with only 67 voting against it, 57 of which were members of the Conservative Party. Included in those voting in favour of the bill were nine Conservative Hampshire MPs, including Winchester MP Steve Bryan, as well as Labour MPs Stephen Morgan and Alan Whitehead of Portsmouth South and Southampton respectively. Voting against the bill was former Home Secretary and MP for Fairham, Suella Braverman, as well as former Prime Minister Liz Truss, who spoke out against the bill. If people want to vote for finger-wagging, nannying control freaks, there are plenty of them to choose from on the benches opposite. The government aims to have the new system in force by 2027, so we still have a few years left until we may see a smoke-free generation. Morgan Michener Banks, Winchester News Online. Now here's the latest sports headlines with Rhys Huggett. Winnell Sport Update. Unai Emery has signed a new contract at Aston Villa. According to The Athletic, Emery has extended his contract until 2027. He was linked to a number of jobs across Europe and has ended speculation by committing his future to the Birmingham club. The Spaniard replaced Steven Gerrard in October 2022 and his side currently sit fourth in the Premier League and are in the semi-finals of the Europa Conference League. Jude Bellingham is targeting further success after being presented with the Breakthrough of the Year prize at last night's Laureus Awards. The England midfielder has scored 23 goals in 43 appearances in his first season with the Spanish league leaders Real Madrid. Bellingham says with his team also in the last four of the Champions League and June's Euros, there could be more silverware to come. We're still in with a chance of two with uh, Madrid and obviously the Euros with England, so I think success would be all three. But um, yeah, it takes a lot of um, work and a lot of sacrifice and hopefully it can, it can happen. Arsenal boss Mikel Arteta says Chelsea counterpart Mauricio Pochettino was like a father to him in his recent playing days. Earlier, earlier, uh, ahead of this evening's clash in the Premier League, the pair were in the same team at Paris Saint-Germain and Arteta says he was inspired by the Argentinian as a teenager. The best influence that he had on me is the way he approached his life, his, uh, his profession, his family who he was as a figure in, in that dressing room and, and had the passion and, and the love he had for, for the game. Mark Selby says he'll consider retirement after crashing out of the World Snooker Championship in a 10-6 defeat to qualifier Joe O'Connor. The four-time winner was knocked out in the first round by the only debutant in this year's tournament at the Crucible in Sheffield. Stuart Bingham booked his place in the last 16 with victory against Gary Wilson by the same score. Among today's action, three-time world champion Mark Williams has a 5-4 lead over last year's surprise semi-finalist Si Jiao Wei going into this afternoon's conclusion of their first round match. Holders Surrey earned their first victory in the new county championship season as they beat Kent by an innings and 37 runs in Canterbury. The win moved them up to second in Division 1. Rain meant Hampshire against Warwickshire and Somerset versus Nottinghamshire both ended in draws. Scotty Scheffler continued his winning run on golf's PGA Tour with a victory at the RBC Heritage. The world number one finished four shots clear of the rest of the field in the rain-delayed event in South Carolina. Scheffler has now won four of the last five tournaments he's played in, including the Masters. For more sport, go to winnell.co.uk. Thank you, Reese. 
Now, a relegation battle was held at Goodison Park between Everton and Nottingham Forest last weekend. However, Forest's antics after the game is what has grabbed the headlines. I'm here with Judge George Busby, who can tell us all about the situation. So George, what happened in the game at Goodison? Yeah, so a, a very tight game at the bottom of the Premier League. And uh, in this game, Nottingham Forest were denied three penalty shouts. Uh, they as a club definitely felt they should have been awarded these penalties and uh, therefore released the club statement afterwards saying this. They also went on to state that they warned the PGMOL about the fact Stuart Atwell, who was in charge of VAR for this game, was a Luton fan. And how have the Premier League responded to this? Uh, they also released a statement afterwards uh, saying that they were extremely disappointed in Forrest's comments and that they are opening an investigation into their statement. They also went in to back their officials' integrity and denied any use of favouritism from VAR. And what reaction can we expect from this situation? Whilst we haven't had any direct news, uh, the most likely outcome will be a fine for Nottingham Forest from the Premier League. Uh, this is a unique situation, so there's no previous history uh, on what the punishment is for something like this. But Forrest themselves are expecting to have the audio from VAR released for all three penalty situations to get a better grasp on why these penalties were not given for them. Thank you, George. Now, Connor Hoare and Callum Glenn have been in the dugout this season for Petersfield Town. They have had a busy schedule ahead of their Portsmouth Senior Cup semi-final on Thursday. Taylor James Greer was at Cam's orders last night when the Rams took on Fairham Town. It's Monday night. It's the final hurdle for Petersfield Town. Connor Hall's men are back on the road for the last time this season, just 51 hours after their 1-1 draw in front of a record home crowd against Cal Sports. But with the club with no physio for a few weeks, Ellie Kirst has recently joined the Rams towards the end of the season. I spoke to her about how clubs prepare for games in such a cramped schedule. If they've got a game, well they have a game tonight, so Monday, they've got one on Thursday, and then they have training as well um, in between that, which is just crazy to be honest. Um, in my opinion, I would I would probably give them more of a rest. Uh, as, as you get towards the end of the season, they're a lot more injured. So yeah, I'm having to do a lot more. Fairham Town swooped aside a heavily rotated Peaceful side in a 5-1 battle at Cowns Ada, which even saw the Creek side is 4-0 up inside 35 minutes. A first half hat-trick by Jamie Trucker was followed up by a brace by Jamie Hookers. 16-year-old Joe Hoodsworth scored a late consolation goal for the Rams, but Fairham extended their beaten run to four games. The Creek side have played 10 games in the space of 16 days. They have picked up 16 points in the process. They'd be very delighted with that. I spoke to assistant manager Callum Glenn, who was on the pitch rather than the dugout this time around about last night's defeat, his thoughts on their first season in charge and an insight to Thursday's fixture. I was disappointed with tonight. Um, uh, we took a risk, obviously rested a load of players for a big game semi-final Thursday and it, it didn't turn out how we wanted it to. Uh, great to fair and thought they were a great side, great energy. With regards to the season, I mean, we can be relatively satisfied with where we are. Um, the brief at the start of the season was to remain in the league. Done, and we've done that quite easily. Um, we've probably done that by Christmas, to be fair to us. So, How confident are you bouncing back on Thursday for the big one? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, yeah, we've been good on that for probably a week or so now, so no excuses for us on Thursday. Pick ourselves up, bounce back. Um, there'll, be, there'll be quite a lot of changes, though, so I'm, I'm confident um, that that will be more than competitive uh, for the game, but hopefully, yeah, bounce back, get a victory and get ourselves into the final. On the pitch on Thursday? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yes, that's right. Thursday could see Petersville Town become Forsham Senior Cup finalists as they host the Royal Navy FA. The winner of the tie could see either side face off against Gosport Borough or Portsmouth Academy. The final will take place on the 15th of May at the PMT Stadium. When speaking to Connor last night, he discussed his thoughts about potentially reaching a cup final in his debut season in charge. Probably the most difficult game to pre uh, prepare for, to be honest with you, because you don't know anything about them, you don't know the players, you have no footage. So it's almost you go into that game just completely worrying about yourself. I mean, the results speak for themselves, they're obviously a good team. They're obviously fit because they're in the Navy. Despite a heavy defeat last night, Connor and Callum can still be proud of their first season in charge, as the units will pick up silverware potentially next season. Taylor James Greer, Winchester News Online. So Taylor, Petersfield were tipped to be in a relegation battle, but they sit comfortably in 12th. What have you made of their season? Well, they they were win this from the they didn't win the first five games at all. They were lost all of them. They didn't pick up a point until the start of September. 
So there were clear favourites like being that relegation battle with Blackford and Langley, Nimington Town and Hive and Divden. But they've actually picked up a lot. I think it helps where where, Connor, where Cal, Callum and Connor used to be at Moneyfields. They've had this connection with Moneyfields and a lot of their players like Charlie Bell and Chad Cornwell who's been at Pompey Academy come in. They've been a really important players for them this season. So they've been really organised and exciting to watch. And it's a massive game for Petersfield on Thursday. Um, do you have any early team news? Well, uh, Callum told me after the game it will be a really strong squad. They had to rest a lot of players last night, which saw Connor and Callum obviously on the pitch. Uh, Thomas T- Tommy Tini will be back. He's won the league last season with Porn Dean, so he was a big, also another big player they missed out yesterday. But it will be on the pitch. And so we've been talking a lot about Petersfield, but what about Fareham? Well, Fareham they've got three games in six days. Another jam-packed schedule for them. They've got Christchurch on. Tuesday on Thursday, Saturday they've got Andover New Street, and on f- next Tuesday they have Follins in the Russell Coates Cup. So a very busy schedule, but they could be semi finalists next week. Thank you, Taylor. Taylor has also been covering the Rams and other local non league news, which you can find on winall.co.uk. Behind the red carpet, this is your Winall Entertainment Update. Now it's time to go to our entertainment centre where Izzy Poole has the latest. A London pub has had to call in more workers after Taylor Swift mentioned their name in her new album. It was released on Friday with The Black Dog as the 17th song. The bar now offers Swift Burger and Taylor's version cocktails. Events manager Lily Bottomley doesn't know for sure if the pub is the one that inspired the song, so we asked her if she could look back at security footage to spot the singer. I have to say we have, but, you know, I don't want to give too much away. We do have a certain blonde regular who frequents, let's just say that. Celine Dion says she doesn't know whether she'll be able to return to her cancelled 2022 world tour after being diagnosed with stiff person syndrome. She revealed in December 2022 that doctors had told her she had had it and she cancelled all performances she had planned. The singer has told Vogue France that she hopes a miracle can be found. Anne Hathaway has reflected on what she describes as a gross pass audition where she had to kiss 10 different men to test for chemistry. The actress says it happened back in the early 2000s, calling it a very different time. She told V Magazine it was considered a normal thing to do and she didn't want to be labelled as difficult. Actress Anne Pokoniak says she felt strong sense of duty to victims in the Holocaust in the Tattoo Auschwitz. She played Jeter in the new six-part series, which is based on a Heather Morris book with the same name. It's about a true story of a man and woman who fell in love when they met at the concentration camps during World War II. The first moment when I got my head shaved and I remember when for the first time I looked at myself in the mirror with no hair and costume. It was very powerful, very profound. It's out next Thursday on Sky Atlantic. In more local news, celebrating the 25th anniversary of York Dance Project, Theatre Royale Winchester is showcasing a contemporary dance piece entitled California Connections. The story follows three pioneering women and is set to be popular and educational performance for people in the local area to enjoy. A new scholarship programme has launched for Winchester Choir in honour of the 40th anniversary celebration. Doily Cart Charitable Trust sponsored the choir to allow young, enthusiastic musicians to join for free. Coming up in May, the ARC in Winchester will start screening a new feature documentary called The Chasing Sun. The piece stars local cycling champion and founder of the UK's longest one-day cycle event, Ollie Moore, along with campaigner Dr Emma Street. Thank you, Izzy. And details on how to book events happening over the next few weeks will be available on the ARC's website. And now, they're the friendly face you'll, you'll have seen on your way to school, a true icon of nostalgia. But Stanmore Lane's resident lollipop lady is at risk of losing her job after Hampshire County Council's decision to cut down many of its services, including crossing patrols. Molly Keane went across to see what she had to say. Bright and bold, the lollipop lady is a classic figure from childhood. But 
Hampshire County Council has made plans to cut this road safety service in order to save £1.1 million amid their £132 million deficit. Here in Winchester, Jackie Jones has been working as a lollipop lady on Stanmore Lane for seven years. Despite this, the council have made the choice to re-evaluate the area and how necessary a crossing guard would be, considering if another safety measure could be put in place instead. However, Jones herself feels that she is essential when it comes to the safety of pedestrians. On this road here, exactly, are definitely unneeded. I mean, there's nowhere to put a crossing and to be honest, traffic coming down that road comes down fast, even though it's a 20 mile an hour limit. And I do see the difference I make. I mean, I've I was knocked over here within the first year. You know, they cut the corner and took me out, um, took the lollipop stick out and sent me flying. Now, there could have been a child behind there. At least if someone stood in the middle of the road with a big yellow coat, someone's more likely to stop. Parents of children who attend the local primary school also feel that Jones makes a real difference. I drop my son off in the car on that side of the road every day, so she crosses him over, so it's very important for us. Like very central because my daughter's in year six so she can walk to and from school on her own and this road is like really busy. I do think it's important because it's a bit crazy down this road at times especially in the mornings when everyone's in a rush so no she's very important and she's so lovely with us all and the kids. In response to the cutting back of this service Hampshire County Council have released the following statement. We know that local communities value their school crossing patrol officers and this is not a reflection on individuals undertaking that role but there may be effective alternatives for some sites, such as installing permanent safety measures or improvements to make a crossing point safer. As well as crossing patrols, other services are facing cuts, including some bus services and household waste recycling centres. Molly Keane, Winchester News Online. And finally, we head back to the news centre for one final roundup of today's stories. This is Win All News. In local news, a man has died after a car crash near Hursley in Hampshire. AA Traffic News said road closed due to a crash, one vehicle involved and debris on the road on A3090, both ways between Hookham Road and B3043 Hursley Road, between Romsey and Winchester since around 4am. The collision involved a red Fiat Punto, which left the carriageway and collided with a tree. Police have confirmed that a man in his 30s from Crookhill, near Ampfield, died at the scene. They are now appealing for witnesses. A spokesman said, We would like to speak to any motorist who saw a vehicle matching this description in the area around the time that police were called. In particular, we would like to speak to anyone with relevant dash cam or CCTV footage. The police are urging those who have any information to come forward. A 12-year-old boy who was accused of attempted murder following a stabbing in Kent has had the charge amended to wounding with intent. Is less serious and the judge says that as the result, the case has to follow a different path. A 15-year-old girl needed emergency surgery for injuries sustained in Sittingbourne on a Friday afternoon in March. An independent police force is going to review the Met's handling of new evidence about the Stephen Lawrence murder. It's 31 years since a racist gang killed the 18-year-old in Eltham in South London. One, only two of his killers have ever been brought to justice. London's Mayor Sadiq Khan said he is glad Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley and his team are being so open. One of the reasons why uh, Sir Mark is keen to make sure a separate police force uh, that, that's got the confidence of the Lawrence family uh, looks into the Met Police assessment is to reassure the public uh, the that Irish this Prime police service now in London has nothing to hide. The Irish Prime Minister is expected to answer calls for a state apology later over a nightclub fire in 1981. From this day forward, we need an apology of our government for the way we were treated for 43 years. Antoinette Keegan's two sisters were among the 48 people who died at the Stardust Club in Dublin. Last week, a jury ruled they were unlawfully killed. The inquest found an electrical fault triggered the blaze. Victims' families are due to receive a formal state apology in Parliament later. Thank you, Alice. That's all we've got time for here at Win All News. Remember, you can stay updated throughout the week for all the news that matters via our website, winall.co.uk, or find us on Twitter at WJournalism. I'm Guy Nicklinson. Thanks for listening. This is Winall News.